Hey guys, it's Brandon coming to you. It's Sunday. It is my 8 o'clock webinar. For those of you guys who don't know, every Sunday I am on here. I'm talking to you guys a little bit about lawn care. Lawn care marketing. Um, we are a lawn care marketing success. This week, guys, I wanted to do a webinar on moderate growth. The reason I wanted to do a webinar on moderate growth is I, a lot of the business owners I talk to, a lot of you guys out there are trying to grow your business, and that's great. Growing is essential. When you're growing your business, you're trying to gain more revenue, gain more customers, and scale your business. You know, you put a lot of time and effort into the business that you're working with. You put a lot of money into what you're doing, and you want to grow it. You want it to be more successful, obviously. But at the same time, guys, you've got to think about while you're growing, don't grow too big for your britches. A lot of companies get involved. They start to grow, and they grow at such a fast pace, they can't keep up with the service end of things. And when you start failing at service, you start failing your customers, and it turns into a snowball effect. Failing and growing too quickly it can be a thing that, you know, short term you don't think about. But long term, you know, if you've got 100 customers a day and by next March you've got 2,000, but you don't have the employees to back that up, the finances to do what you need to do to back that up, you're essentially failing you and you're failing your employees, your business, and yourself. You don't want to walk into that situation. So let's cover this topic today on slow and moderate growth and let's really get into the root of it. As you're growing your business, it doesn't matter if you've got 100 customers, 1,000 or 10,000. You want to grow at a pace that you can keep up with. Um, there's a few basic numbers I'm going to shoot out here for you guys, and I hope they help a little bit. But a way that I've always done my moderation and growing myself to scale with companies that I've worked with, we start off by looking at the numbers in front of us. You know, If you've got 4,000 customers sitting on your dashboard, you want 5,200 by the end of the season. What are you going to need? How many trucks will you need for that extra set of customers? Um, a good rule of thumb is four to 500 customers per truck. Yes, that means that one guy, one truck, should be able to take care of four to 500 of your customers. It sounds crazy, but in all reality, you know, sitting down and doing math, if you've got routes going out once a week, every week you put these routes out from Monday through Saturday or Monday through Friday, and that technician is working 30 houses a day, it's 150 houses a week. That's almost 600 for that whole month, as long as he's working all days. Now, you could break that down a little bit, maybe 21, 22 homes. 22 homes a day, you know, you break that down across a week, you're coming out on top. That technician is covering those homes, that truck is being utilized, your money is being made back for you, and you're making profit off of those routes, as long as you're charging the right price. As you're growing, you want to make sure that that math stays the same. If you get to a point where you're having 50, 60, 70 extra customers per truck, it's about time you may need another truck and another guy to do some routes. You never want to overdo your guys. You don't want your guys ghosting lawns. Um, if you guys pay attention, many big name companies, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus here, constantly make it in the media for ghosting lawns. There are business people out there, there are homeowners, residential people that have put a lot of these big companies guys on blast and said, hey, they're ghosting lawns. They're in here ghosting lawns. They're not doing their job. And why is that? Nine out of ten times, those technicians are overworked. A lot of times, they're underpaid. And when you're overworking somebody and underpaying them, and you're not utilizing your employee skill sets, you're not only failing your employee, but you're failing yourself long term. If you want a good quality name in our industry, you have to do a good job. You can't go out and do a bad job. If you're doing a bad job, you need to look at what's wrong with your structure and fix it from there. And this is all things we got to think about when we're getting into growing our business. If I'm growing my business and I want to have an extra 1,200 customers by the end of season or an extra 200, I need to be sure that I can handle those customers. I need to be sure that I can provide quality work for them and that I'm doing an overall good job. You've got to do a good job for these people. If you're not doing a good job, your reputation is going to sink. It'll start and it'll just snowball. It starts with reputation, the call-ins for resprays. The you know, customers calling in angry that there's a problem with their lawn. That rolls into bad Google reviews, bad YouTube reviews, bad Twitter reviews, Home Advisor, Thumbtack, which then spirals into more phone calls and more upset customers. Before you know it, you've got a ginormous problem on your hands. It's really hard to fix. I've seen this more than once. I've seen this more than twice. I've seen this more than a dozen times, to be completely honest, and that is a great business with quality ethics and quality morals, a quality service and good, you know, Customer satisfaction wants to grow, and they grow too rapidly. 
you have to slow down your growth cycle and make a plan for it. Get out a piece of paper. If you're watching this, sit down and actually take some notes here. I don't know if you're looking to grow your business if you're watching it or you're just watching it because you want to learn a little bit about marketing. But tonight's entire webinar is going to be a step-by-step -step on how to grow properly. So if you've got a second and you're watching my video, grab yourself a pen, grab a piece of paper. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds here to get ready, and we're going to go step-by-step -step on how to grow appropriately and how to grow at a speed that's going to be healthy for your business. While you guys are grabbing your pen and your paper, I am going to sneak over here, and sorry, my screen's moving. Got you guys sitting at my lap desk. I'm going to, you know, get myself a little drink of this here soda. It's natural sugar cane. Found it at 7-Eleven. Best stuff I've ever had. Phenomenal soda. No, I'm not sponsored by 7-Eleven, nor am I one to push other people's products. But, guys, this right here, the best soda I've ever had in my life. It's created by Jones out of Irving, Texas. It's phenomenal. All right, so now we're going to get into this. If you've got your pen and paper, you're watching this video, take that pen and paper, and the first thing I want you to write, why I want to grow. Why do you want to grow your business? What is it that makes you want to grow your business? Is it a financial gain? Is it a satisfaction gain? Do you need to, you know, dense up your routes? Are your routes really thin? Are you doing a house in this neighborhood, going five blocks over and doing a house in the next neighborhood? Why do you want to grow that business? Nine out of ten people are going to say, want more money? And I want denser routes. Those are the two main things I always hear. Some people, oh, well, you know, I could always use more customers. But densing up your routes, making more money, who doesn't want that? Let's be honest. I want more money. I'd love dense routes. I'd love to send a guy out to a neighborhood and have every house in the neighborhood and know that I'm servicing them and we're doing a good job. And they love us and we're coming back. So why? Right now, write down your why. Give yourself a paragraph. Nothing fancy. Two, three sentences on why you want to grow your business. Give you a second here. <clears throat> now that we've gotten past that why, how? How is next? How are we going to grow your business? How are we going to scale this business appropriately and allow the right type of customer satisfaction? The answer is very simple. I need you to write underneath this. <clears throat> Take a little sentence and put grow steadily, grow focused, grow customer centric. Three things that you're going to want to stand by. It sounds crazy, but under grow steadily and under that little line, you want to set a realistic goal. If you've got 100 customers right now and you want to, I want 200 customers by the end of the year, and I want to grow by 20 customers a month. Put that goal on paper. The next step, we're going to step underneath that. We're going to pick that next little sentence there. We're going to grow steadily. We're going to grow comfortably. And we're going to go grow customer centric comfortably. What do we mean by comfortably? If I gain 20 customers a month, how much money will I need to put in in the forefront to ensure that those customers are satisfied? I know that there are prepaid customers out there in a lot of businesses. That's all you take. Great. You'll, you'll be covered. If your customers aren't prepaying and they're paying as they go or they're easy pay customers to charge after the service, you've got to fork up the money for the product. If you grow by 20 customers a month, you got to think about how many bags of fertilizer you're going to need, how much extra weed control you're going to need. If you're just mowing lawns, how many lawns you're going to mow and how much gas you're going to need for that mower and how many extra hours your employees are going to need. Is that something you can feasibly maintain at that growth level? If it's not, step your goal down. And, you know, 100, 200 customers isn't bad, but if you want to grow 1,200 customers and you're going to grow by 150 a month, can you afford to put a guy out there and get that job done? and wait for that return in profitability. Meaning, can you afford to take on that 150 customers? If you're at that level, you've probably got a sales guy or a sales team calling. Can you afford that team? Can you afford to have that guy go out and wait for your money? If not, set your goal a little bit lower. You're not hurting yourself or anybody else by slowing your goals down a little bit. You should aim at about a 10% growth rate per season. Doesn't matter how big you are in the business, you wanna grow by 10%. And you want to reduce customer cancellation. If you can keep your customer retention great, you can set those goals feasibly, you're wonderful. You're going to be fine. Now let's get to the third step here. The third step in this, the most important one, is growing customer-centric. What does that actually mean? 
when I'm growing a business, when you're growing a business, when anybody's growing a business, it doesn't even matter. Lawn care is what we do in landscaping, but it doesn't matter if you're growing, you know, a hula hoop business. If you're growing a business, you grow customer centric. You have to grow offering services or a product that makes your customer happy with them in mind. I know it sounds crazy. You're in this business to make you money. You're in this business to make your friends, you know, your business partners, your employees, whoever else you got to take care of. You're in it to take care of everybody that you need to take care of and still come out profitable. But you got to think about that customer. If you're not pleasing your customer, if you're not growing with your customer in mind, you're failing. When you're growing a business and you're focused on growing the right way, you have to be customer centric. You have to think about that customer at all times. When your technician's out on the lawn doing a job, you have to ensure the job's quality. Don't overwork the tech. You have to ensure as you're growing that on top of that quality job, you're doing proper follow-up. How many times have you called the customer this week after a job's been finished and asked how they felt the job went? Bet you didn't realize that by calling that customer, you could have another Google review, which will help you with your SEO. You could have another Thumbtack review, which could help you with your SEO. You could simply touch that person that week by giving them a phone call, and they might have had a rough week, and by you calling them, you could have made them happy and upsold yourself another service. Can't tell you how many times I picked up the phone while I'm in a growth plan. Hey, how you doing? This is, you know, Brandon with Lawns, Lawns, and Lawns, you know, and it's just a, an example. You know, how, how do you feel my guys did on the service this week? Oh, I think, you know, you did a wonderful job. I really like what they're doing. They're really informative. Your technicians were great. Okay, well, is there any way I could talk you into giving me a review? You know, if you really, really appreciated the service, I'd really appreciate a review for my business. That's growing customer centric. You're growing, but at the same point in time, you're caring about that customer enough to where they're thinking about you. If that customer is thinking about you by the end of that service and they're willing to give you a review, they're willing to help build your business and help your goal set, there's nothing wrong with that, guys. Take advantage of that and grow customer centric. While we're talking about that, in the growth phase, when you're getting new customers and you're starting to grow steadily, what are you doing to retain the old customers? You never want to get to a point where you're so focused on growth that you're burning other customers. If you're behind for your current customers, stop focusing on growth and focus on your current customers. Reestablish that base. Solidify what you're working on. You need to grow customer-centric. You need to focus on your customer base. You need to focus on that home base and what's paying the bills, what's putting the meat and potatoes on your plate, and once they're happy, focus on growth. If you're in a growth phase and you know that you're able to grow and that's something you want to do, do it, but do it right, guys. You want to grow your businesses right. You want to be financially stable. You want to put more money into your pocket, your business partner's pockets, your employees' pockets, because the more money that you're putting into everybody else's pocket, in reality, if you're doing it right, that's more money you're taking home. But as we grow, as we focus on that ROI, as we focus on all these numbers and all these things that cross us in the business world, we have to grow steadily and we have to grow the right way. Mass growth will crash you. I've seen it. I've been there for it. I've watched businesses gain three, 4,000 customers in a year. For most guys in our industry that are startups or even in it for a few years and running their own businesses, we couldn't fathom growing three to 4,000 customers in a year. I've also watched those businesses fall on their face. And I've watched some succeed with the right planning. But you do not want to grow bigger than your britches. I'm using some old school terminology here. Yeah, I said bigger than your britches. But you do not want to grow your business bigger than you can handle. You don't want to grow without a plan. And when you're growing with a plan, you want to grow with a strategic plan. If you're focused in the middle of Minnesota and you're in St. Paul, you want to grow around St. Paul. You want to pick three towns near you that you've already got a good solid base in. And you want to focus on growing in those areas. If you've got, you know, a house on John Street in St. Paul, Minnesota, and that's the only house you're doing on that street, you might want to get three or four more customers on that street. It'll help solidify your routes. It'll reduce your overall cost while bringing you in more revenue. You always want to look at the revenue. You always want to look at your bottom line as you're growing as a business. You've got to look at these things, guys. This is what's going to help you succeed. you got to focus on that bottom line you got to focus on where you want to be and what your goals are while you're building. I'm guessing half of you guys that have been watching this, and I see a few viewers popping in and out. I really appreciate you guys tonight. But I'm guessing you guys have all got businesses and you've all worked very hard at them. Now imagine if you put a good, solid action plan together and focused on that growth that in your heart you know you can reach, and you did it this next season. It's 2017, guys. 
It's September 24th. We're ending our season. We're doing our fall aerations and seedings, our fall cleanups. For you guys that do Christmas lights, you're getting ready for your Christmas lights. You're selling the heck out of it. But as we walk into 2018, we walk into springtime, where do we want to be by the end of springtime? From January to May 1st, what do you want to do with your business? I want to grow. I want more customers. But I have to do it right. We have to do it the right way to make our customers happy. We have to do it in a way that we're going to grow appropriately and not out of our britches. Sit down, make a plan, really focus on this as we're focusing on growth. Aim for something successful. If anybody has a question, please feel free to comment on the side. I'd be glad to answer your questions. I'd be glad to help with the best of my ability with anything you guys might be interested in learning. But tonight, guys, again, we're focused on growth. Um, moderate growth is phenomenal. Um, growing moderately, growing at a speed you're capable of keeping up with is something I guarantee you will be more useful for you than growing by a thousand customers. If you're spending a million dollars in marketing and your supplies and your equipment is outdated as heck, you're wasting your time. You're doing a disservice to you and your customers. If you're planning to grow, another thing I'd like to cover is the equipment you're using. If you're planning to grow and you want to get on new customers' lawns, When's the last time you tuned up your aeration machine? How old is it? How many trucks do you have? And when's the last time you, you know, sat down and took a look at possibly getting yourself a new truck for these new customers? What is your image outside to the public? Do you have a five-star rating? Or are you trying to grow with a 2.2? If you're trying to grow and you've got a horrible reputation because you are already servicing too many people and you're not up to speed with what you need to be doing, focus on that first. Avoid growth. Avoid moderate growth. Avoid any growth. Until you're satisfying your customers and you're happy with what you're doing and you feel you're doing a solid job, don't grow. Don't focus on it. Focus your attention on bettering your business. And when you're ready for growth and you're ready for that moderate growth, grow with a plan. Set your plan into motion. Write down your goals. Sit down. Get out that piece of paper. Break down where you want to be, but don't overdo it. When you're overdoing it is when you start to see failure. You start to see stress, your team and your employees start to stress out, start to lose good people because you're too focused on growing too quickly. Never focus on growing too quickly. Slow yourself down a little bit. If you don't, <clears throat> you'll end up in you know a lot of places and will fail. Gerald, let me take a look here. There are points if you don't have infrastructure in the place. Exactly. If you don't have infrastructure, if you don't have a plan, Gerald, you're gonna crash. And you know, the whole reason I'm preaching on this this evening, usually I come on here. And I just, you know, talk a little bit about a marketing tip here or there. It's because uh, this week I came across a couple of people I really care about in the industry, good friends of mine. And they've all come to me with the same question and exactly what you just said right there, Gerald. They've ended up falling on their faces with the inability to grow properly. I had one guy came to me and he goes, you know, Brandon, you're a great marketing guy. You know, I hired you for marketing. We got what we we're aiming at. Why am I crashing? And I said, well, remember when I spoke to you in the beginning of the season? Did you look at the numbers? Did you look at the trucks? The gentleman hadn't bought a new truck. We'd got him up by about 650 customers, and he was overbearing on the current employees he had. So he had these routes going out with 40 to 50 stops a day, and he just couldn't seem to fathom why every day he had customer complaints. People were getting the front lawn fertilized and not the back, no note being left, no call into the office. When they didn't get to the back lawn, they were just skipping and going on to the next one. And I had to sit him down, and I really was open with it. And I said, you know, take a look here. When you're pushing this much weight onto your guys because you want to make a profit, you got to split that profit up amongst your business and your guys. You have to get another truck. You have to get new employees. You can't keep adding to these guys' as routes. They went from 24 stops where they were doing great to 30 they were doing okay. 35 they started to struggle. Now you're into the 40s and 50s, and you're expecting this. And then on top of that, they weren't getting done. Every day he had multiple stops in his routes that weren't getting taken care of. And he had customers that were still on their second or third round of fertilization and weed control, while others were on their seventh, sixth. And he's, well, what's going on? Well, buddy, you got to grow at a good pace. And that's why I'm bringing this out tonight. You've really got to grow at that pace and go to where you need to go. Hey, you know what? I really appreciate your comments tonight, Gerald, but you're 100% right, my friend. You do. It's all about making sure that your equipment and employees are taken care of. You, I see put equipment there, but for me, it's always employees as well. You can have the best of equipment, but you got to take care of your guys, and you can't overwork them. If they're willing to go put one in for the team and do a little extra hard work, amen, I'm right behind that. But by no means do I like to push my guys. 
I hate to get out there and see guys come in and not like their job or feel dissatisfied with what they're doing because they're running through it. I've had the luck of a few really good technicians. Um, I've had seasons where we're running 19, 20, sometimes 25 technicians to keep up with some of our bays. But these guys were doing a good job because they had the right amount of work. They had the right amount of efforts put in, and that to me is huge. If you've got, you know, just the right amount, uh, 24, 25 stops, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing all liquid applications, you can change that up a little bit. I'm not a fan of all liquid. I like to see, you know, actual granule fertilizer put down and then liquid weed control. I'm also one for only blanket spraying a few times a season. One, I think that if you overdo it, you're hurting the pH levels in the lawn and doing more harm than good. But at the same time, if you're going to send somebody out to do a blanket spray and they do a good job the first time, one of the things I like to train the guys on in a growth phase is, hey, if you do this blanket spray the first time the right way, from here on out, what you'll be focusing on and what you'll be facing is the fact that you can spot spray some of these areas. And you're 100% right there, Gerald. It is a cat and mouse game. But even then and past that in growth, if you're not financially capable as a business person of handling the type of growth you're looking for, you've just got to slow it down a little bit. We all want to grow. We all want to get bigger. We all want to put more money in our pocket. We all want to get to that point, but you got to do it at a feasible rate. If you've got 200 customers today and you tell me you want 700 by next season and you don't have the finances to do it and you can't front load what you're trying to build up to, you're failing yourself anyway. I mean, you're going to step into this get focused, get gun-ho about what you're doing, and that's great. But when you get all those customers and you can't afford the pallets of fertilizer to get out and do the job, and you didn't pre-plan and do a prepay special or do an easy pay special and get a credit card on file, honestly, you're screwing yourself. About 8% of people out there, no matter how good you are at what you do, they don't pay their bills. It's just an unfortunate thing we walk into with bigger businesses. I've walked into some companies and helped restructure them and had $1.2, $1.3 million in unpaid debt. I've walked into smaller businesses and seen 30, 40 grand in unpaid debt. That's money you as a business owner are gambling with if you don't have a plan for it. And if you're gambling, we all have to take that gamble at some point and to some level. But if we're taking that gamble, we have to ensure that that's a gamble we're going to make it through. You do not want to walk into the beginning of a season, set your goals up here, walk out at the end of the season. You've got sky high goals and you've met them, but you've got $50,000 sitting there that's unpaid and you front-loaded all of that money. That's going to pull your profitability right from underneath your feet. It's going to leave you as the business person kind of screwed, to be honest. And it's going to hurt you and whatever employees you do have at that point in time when you can't pay the bills because you're not getting paid. I always tell people when you're looking to grow, grow to the level that you're comfortable playing with. If you can afford $50,000 and it's not going to kill your pocketbook, great. <clears throat> grow to that level grow 250 customers. If one falls off, if 10 fall off, you're going to be financially sufficient. You're not going to land on your face. But when you're growing, guys, when you're growing your business and looking to build up, grow to your pocketbooks level. Never crash on your face. Never grow to that point where you're like, yes, I've got 700 new customers. No, my kids aren't eating tonight and neither is my employees' kids. Grow to the point where you're like, you know what? Okay, 10% of my customers haven't paid. We have done a good job. We're doing the best we can. We're going to have to call them, try to collect the money, or move to a collection agency. But don't leave yourself unstable trying to grow rapidly. Now, also in growth, another thing we need to talk about is reputation management. A lot of you guys out there have great reputations. I love coming across lawn care businesses, especially guys that I work with and my customers, and they've got five-star ratings. Hey, I've got all five stars on Thumbtack, Home Advisor, Google. My name's phenomenal. Yelp. Yelp is a disaster. For anybody who's watching this, I see I've got a handful of you guys now, I can tell you right now, Yelp is the biggest disaster I've ever dealt with. When you get small and then you start growing bigger and bigger and bigger, Yelp is disastrous. Don't waste your money with Yelp. If you are using Yelp and you have luck, congratulations. It's always failed me 10 times over. I've watched good businesses get their reputations destroyed. Hardworking business people go out there and do a good job and get screwed up because of Yelp. I've really really strongly advise when you're growing your business, focus on your online reputation. It sounds silly, but 90% of what we do nowadays, 90% of what we go through in this industry is all customer review related. There's a hundred of us, and I hate to say it like that, but it doesn't matter where you're at. Unless you're in a small niche community, you're probably not watching this video because you do your marketing through the mail and through the local newspaper still. There's a hundred of us. In every city, in every town, there's a hundred guys that cut lawns. You may charge full price and have a brick-and-mortar store where you have to do what you have to do to make a profit, 
but I guarantee you there's a guy next door who'll do it for 20 bucks. What sets you apart at that point? How are you going to grow and grow moderately even when the guy next door is undercutting you five times out of 10? Online reputation and a quality reputation. You ever heard word of mouth is the best friend? Referrals guys are phenomenal. If you've got a great online reputation, that in and of itself is for every lasting referral. If I get online and I'm looking for any sort of service, lawn care, anything else for that matter, and I look at your business and you've got a five-star rating, and I'm what you consider to be part of the millennials. So you guys who are watching may be part of my generation, you may be some older gentlemen. Us millennials and above, we're looking at your reputation. If your reputation's good, we're going to give you a shot. If I hear from my friend down the street that you're great, that's phenomenal. I'm going to give you a call, but I'm still going to look at your online reputation. And you can talk the best game possible and talk sales to me all day. And I'm easily sold if you've got a good reputation. But I get on there, and the first thing I see is he came out to do my lawn or the company came out to do my lawn this week. They burned my lawn. They didn't take responsibility for it. I don't see any action from the business itself. You're failing yourself. You're failing your customers, and you're failing your reputation. In this growth phase, you guys need to be focused in everything you're doing. Your online reputation, growing steadily, growing at a safe pace, not over lifting the money in your pocket, throwing it over your shoulder and walking away. You need to take all these things into account and plan for it, and it'll work out much, much better. Um, <clears throat> if anybody else has questions, guys, I'm going to be on here for about 15 more minutes. I do have a few more topic points to cover. Anybody who did grab a notepad and pen, if you have any questions about the original setup in the beginning of the video, just planning for growth, please feel free to ask. Again, I'm going to take a two-second break here, get a little bit of my soda. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, love this soda. Falling in love with it. Found it at 7-Eleven. It's like the best stuff ever. It's an all-natural cane soda. I don't know why they sell them, and I don't know why I have so much of it, but I ended up buying like two shelves out of 7-Eleven, planning to do our webinar tonight. I just had to have something to drink, and usually I'll get myself a coffee, or I'll go get a water, you know, trying to be healthy, trying to keep, you know, the weight down a little bit, but all natural cane soda, I just had to do it. All right, guys, so the next important big topic point that I want to cover is while you're building your growth, where do you spend your marketing budget to keep yourself moderate? And you know, when you're spending a marketing budget, any guy that I've talked to, I've talked to hundreds of people over the last few years, they always get screwed somewhere. As business guys, we're always getting screwed. We're always throwing in a fishing pole, reeling it in and hoping to catch something. If you guys have avenues that are working, if you're using, you know, Thumbtack, and Thumbtack is a great resource, and it's helping you, keep your money where you've got it. Don't pull your money out and take any big leaps while you're in a growth phase. If you're going to take a leap, do it moderately. If you've got a $5,000 budget or even a $1,000 budget, let's bring it real low. Say you got got $1,000 for the year. Every year you spend $500 on Thumbtack. Every year you spend $500 on Home Advisor. You've gotten the same results, but you want to grow a little bit more. What I'd suggest doing is reevaluating that budget and bumping it up a little, but don't dive in headstrong. Don't let anybody take your budget and go, hey, you need to go and maximize it and spend 20 grand this year. No, add to it gradually. Gradually grow into that marketing structure that you want to get. Gradually grow into growth. I'm sorry, I'm going to read this comment here. The other thing with growth is some guys try to do too many things. Yeah, okay, uh, Gerald, I'm going to pull off topic. You're 100% correct. That is something I've seen, and um, there's a great example of that here in the Chicagoland area. They're a good business, and they've been a good business for years, but I've noticed lately their reputation has gone downhill, and they're a larger scale company. It's called uh, Green Tea Services. Really like the business, really like the business model. Uh, the Corey family that owns it has always done a phenomenal job. I've liked the way they've done what they've done, and I've actually been working for um, another family member of theirs in another business across town for quite some time and you watch these guys and they're great business people but about the last two or three years they've grown such I can't even say that it's not even <laughs> in such a way they've grown so massively into so many markets you can't keep up with it they went from lawn care to gutter cleaning to Christmas lights from aerations and seatings they jump over and they're selling you grub control pest control carpet cleaning you know don't be a triggering <laughs> don't jump all over the board guys don't do it unless you can afford it. You've got the plan for it. You've got the employees for it. If you're going to grow at that speed, at that rate, and in that way, you have to make sure you have your bases covered. You don't want to be caught pulling up to a customer's house, 
pulling one magnetic sticker off of your truck to throw another one on for another service. Grow comfortably. Grow safely. Grow in a way that's going to keep your reputation up. The last thing you want to do is get onto Google, take a look at your reputation the last six months. You've dropped by two points, meaning you've gone from a five-star company to a three-star company because you're doing too much that you don't understand. When you acquire a new service, if you're going to go ahead and get into Christmas lights or you're going to do aerations and seatings for the first time ever, and you've always just done lawn mowing and lawn fertilization learning, understand it. Invest a little. Don't invest in marketing the crap out of it. Invest where it's important. Invest where you're going to profit. If you want to do aerations and seedings, your first season, rent a Ryan aerator. May cost a little extra to rent one, but rent a decent piece of equipment. Don't go buy the cheapest thing you can get or something used that's falling apart and end up digging up a customer's lawn. I can't tell you guys how horrible that is, and I've been in those shoes. I've been there and watched production managers screw the entire company over, taking the bad equipment out and doing a poor job. I've seen guys who wanted to grow into a market Go out, pick up the first thing they get their hands on because they wanted to grow into it, and they'd sell one, 200 aerations and seedings. And they'd go out there with the crappiest seed they get their hands on. They'd put down bad seed, didn't do a good job, do it at the wrong time, do a dormant seeding, and screw up a lawn. They're going to grow into it any service. I don't care what it is. Understand it. Learn it. Go to a few classes. Go to a seminar. Go to your local John Deere, your local Russo's, Site One. Talk to your salespeople. Understand what you're getting. I'm not saying to come home with a $10,000 machine and $20,000 in product with no customers, but do your research before you get into something. Just because you've been cutting lawns for 10 years doesn't mean you're the best at doing everything and you can pick up a new service you don't understand and succeed from it. If you're going to pick up that new service, do a little bit of research, guys. It's not hard. You can learn a lot off a little bit of research. If you're going to step out, you're going to grow in that way, do your homework. Understand what you're doing. Twist and turn a little bit in your head and go, okay, what am I getting myself into? If I am never before in my life touched an aeration machine, I guarantee you at September 24th, I'm not going to grab an aerator and go out there and start aerating lawns and hope I do it right. I'm going to start learning in April what they are. I'm going to start researching in April what I'm doing for the fall, how I'm going to make that service work. I'm going to do my financial back-end research, see exactly what they're going for in my area. You know, for my area and the Chicagoland area, 3,000 square feet, it's a little overpriced, but most people get an aeration and seeding for about $125 to $175. 3,000 square feet, three pounds of seed per 1,000 square feet, that's full aeration front and back. When you're doing something like that, when you're selling a service like that, I look at the equipment I'm using, the cost of the seed, how much seed I put down per 1,000 square feet, how much that 50-pound bag cost, I break that bag down per pound of seed, I'm charging $3 a pound of seed. So you're going to charge essentially $9 a thousand square feet. So you got $27 wrapped up in seed. The rest of that cost goes into labor, aeration, FICA, FICA, if you've got employees, all those wonderful things. But you want to make sure you got your pricing down right, of course, that you're not getting too many services sold to where you can't handle it. And then on top of that, you have to be sure as a business owner that you're using the right equipment and doing the right job. One of the funniest stories, and I'll be real quick here, that I've ever had was picking up a company in Texas, and this was about two years back. And this kid was headstrong, and I'm a kid still, I'm not going to lie. I'm barely into my late 20s. But this young gentleman was about 21, and he'd had a lot of success. He'd opened up a business his second year, he was at 300 customers, did it all by himself, and he was so proud of himself. And he called me up to get some marketing help, and we started talking. And I started looking at his reviews, and I said, Josh, what's going on with your reviews, buddy? And he goes, well, I don't understand what I did wrong. And he goes, my customers are upset. I put the wrong type of grass down, I think. I said, you know, give me a week to help you here. Give me a list of upset customers. I know I'm from another state. We'll bounce a phone number off. We set up a phone number extension so I could call from a local area code. Started calling the customers to see what had happened. The young man was so excited to add another service for his customers that he didn't do any homework, and he ran into it. And he took and he seeded Bermuda on Zoysia lawns in St. Augustine, completely destroying a lot of these lawns. I don't know if you know, you're know you from the South. The Southern people love their Zoysia grass. They love their St. Augustine grass. They love their Bermuda grass. Some people like to mix them. A lot of people don't like them mixed. A lot of people spend a lot of money to have a St. Augustine lawn and to have it plugged and to have that put in. There are people out there that will spend thousands and thousands of dollars to have a beautiful Zoysia lawn. So this young man's hard lesson was, 
he ended up having to pay for about 15 lawns to get fixed because he'd gone out, ran to do a service, wanted to make a profit, wanted to add something to his itinerary without doing his homework. Always do your homework, no matter what it is that you're doing. If you've never done grub control, study grub control. Don't just buy a bunch of dialogs and think you know what you're doing. If you've never done mole control, study what it takes to get rid of those moles. Do your research. I don't care what service you're putting your hands on and how you want to grow. Do it steadily. Do it responsibly. And become successful at what you're doing. Be the best at what you're doing, guys. You have to be. We're in this industry to make a profit, of course. But we also have to be in it and be intelligent about what we're doing. We can't go out there and just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and hope it sticks. A lot of us can't afford it. And those who can't afford it, you still don't want a bad rap for what you're doing. So focus on that, guys. I really appreciate all you guys checking in tonight. It's been a very, very fun and exciting week for us here. We did publish our book earlier on this week. If you guys haven't seen it, it's free. I do not charge for anything we put out. I'll be very straightforward and honest. I wrote it all. Um, my grammar isn't top notch. Not the best guy with grammar, but I'm pretty smart when it comes to business. I put a lot of effort into that book for you guys. It's about 28 pages. You can find it on the website. You can find links on Facebook. Read that. Do a little bit of marketing research this week, guys. Next week's webinar, I really want to get some of you guys involved, some other business people involved as well. Anybody who wants to speak on a webinar and who feels like I got a little bit of something to share, please reach out to us. Send us an email. We really want to help the business people in our industry. We want to see the lawn care industry growing strong. We want to see it growing strong with independently owned businesses. We don't want to help the corporations. We want to help the guys out there that are doing it the right way and who are doing it as a family-owned business. After all, we're in America. Everybody deserves the right to be in business, and we want to help support you guys. Also, guys, if you look at Lawn and Landscape Magazine this week, um, <clears throat> I myself actually got quoted in the due diligence article. I got another article coming out completely about myself, and I will be speaking in February for Site 1 out of Minnesota. Any of you guys that are from Minnesota, I'll be out there for two days. I'll also be teaching some uh, classes and things like that, but I got the honor of uh, the ability to go out and work with a site manager for Site 1, and I'll be doing a lot of uh, teaching for the next few weeks and into next year as well. I'll put up a list of places I'll be at. I'll be in Minnesota next February, next March. I'll be out in Maine for a little while, and then down in North Carolina, I'm going to be booking up um, some teaching and spe speaking engagements, and then from there, I will be back, of course, on my ground here in Chicago working to build and continue building other people's marketing. If any of you guys have any questions, if you're confused about something, we don't charge to talk. We're here for you guys. We'd love to help small businesses. We'd love to help point you guys in the right direction and help with things that you may be struggling with. If there's a question, comment, or concern you may have, just reach out to us. We'd be glad to help you. And on that note, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get myself prepped up. I'm going to go eat some cheese raviolis. I love my raviolis. My uh, wife cooks them homemade. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had them, but homemade raviolis are the best. And I got, again, some natural sugar cane soda here. So I'm going to go have some sugar cane soda and some raviolis. If you guys email me throughout the night, um, myself and a few team members will be up checking our emails. We'd be glad to help you, glad to point you in the right direction. Thank you guys again for checking in. We greatly appreciate it. We hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Thanks for taking the time out to watch us. Have a good evening, everybody.